Let's take a look at how we can use the t-chart method to help us find missing elapsed time. Our word problem says Owen had an, apart, uh, an appointment at the dog groomer at 11.38 a.m. He left after the appointment was over at 3.56. How long was Owen's appointment? Our first important piece of information is 11.38 a.m. Now, since his appointment began at 11.38, that tells us that this is our start time. He left after the appointment was over at 3.56. Now, since this is after the appointment, this will be our end time. How long was Owen's appointment? That's the question that we're being asked to answer. Now, if we have our start time, we have our end time, we are looking for the elapsed time. So as you can see, I now have my T-chart drawn out. Uh, I have the times that are gonna be listed are gonna be over on this side, and the hours and minutes, this will actually show our elapsed time over here. I also have uh, my start time labeled as well as my end time. Now, we're gonna start with the start time over here on time. So we'll put that 11.38 over here. This is what 11.38 a.m. looks like on our analog clock and on our digital clock. Now, as we go through, this here is where we're gonna wanna watch because this is what shows us our elapsed time. And if we do everything right, then our elapsed time here should match what we have written down. Now, when it comes to a strategy like a T-chart, we want to work with as friendly of numbers as possible, either groups of 10 or quarter hours, which are third, uh, sorry, 15 minutes, okay? So what we'll want to do is let's go ahead and get this up to a more friendly number, which uh, let's do 1140, okay? So we're going to go from 1138 to 1140. 40. How many minutes happened between 11.38 and 11.40? Well, 11.38, 39.40, that gives us two minutes. 11.38, 39, 40, and you can see we've gone up two minutes right there. Okay, now we can start making bigger jumps for a little while. Uh, in fact, we're going to go with our hours. Okay, so we're going to go from 1140 counting up by hours until we reach this three o'clock hour. Okay, so we'll start at 1140. We'll jump to 1240. Now we are in PM. Remember, we've gone from the morning and now we're in the afternoon. We've gone from AM to PM. Twelve forty PM. 140, 240, 3, 40. Okay, now we don't want to go up any more hours because we are in the three o'clock hour over here. Okay, so from 1140 to 1240, and we're going to label all of these, is one hour, and we label hour with HR. Now I'm going to go through and do the rest up until here. There we go. Remember that one full rotation of the clock is one hour or 60 minutes. Now we've done four of them, so if we do four, our digital clock up here should match what we had written down, which was 340. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Now we can start moving up our minutes again. We were at 340 and we need to get to 356. So again, let's find a, a, a friendly or a compatible number to jump up and we'll do with 10 minutes. So let's go from 340 to 350 and that is going to be 10 minutes. 
five, 10, and now we're at 350. And then we're gonna go 350 to 356 is going to be six minutes. So three. Six minutes. 351, 352, 353, 354, 355, 356. Now, all we have to do is go through and add all of these up, okay? So I always start with the biggest, uh, which will be our hours. So we have one, two, three, four hours. Four hours. We have, uh, and, and one thing I like to do is I like to go through and cross them out so I know that I've already added them up here. Okay, and then we have our minutes left. We have two minutes, 10 minutes, and six minutes. Well, I know that if I put 10 minutes and six minutes together, it gives me 16 minutes. Add two more is 18 minutes. So our elapsed time is four hours. Eighteen minutes. Going back to our tools here, we can see that our elapsed time shows that we did it correct. There are four hours, eighteen minutes. Now we can go and answer the question. Owen's appointment was four hours, eighteen minutes.